Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, August 19th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Still tracking Grace and Henri here. Grace has moved onshore into the Yucatan Peninsula, made landfall as a hurricane last night. This is the current infrared satellite loop showing the core of the storm now over land, and you can see these black and gray colors are fading away now toward orange and red, indicating that cloud tops are warming and thunderstorms are collapsing somewhat as the storm is over land and typical decay will happen as the storm crosses. It is a fairly quick crossing as the storm is moving briskly and it will be back over water in several hours and it will have about a day's worth of time over the Bay of Campeche water with which to potentially reorganize and some restrengthening is forecast before a second landfall in eastern Mexico. This is the water vapor satellite loop showing the bigger picture here. And Grace is in an area of generally low environmental shear, and as it moves out over the warm waters, very warm waters in fact, of the Bay of Campeche, about 31 degrees Celsius, it will encounter fairly favorable conditions, the only exception to that being still some tongue of dry mid-level air nosing in on the western side, and this helped to limit Grace's intensification on approach to the Yucatan, and it may still play a role as the storm re-emerges and moves toward the west. A slight bend to the west-southwest may be possible here as it moves into the coastline of eastern Mexico, somewhere between Tampico and Veracruz. This is the NHC current forecast showing a hurricane warning along that section of coastline and a tropical storm warning northward toward the Tampico area, showing a slight bend here again, making landfall sometime Friday evening. Uh, about a day over water here, so not a lot of time, so we're not expecting this to really become a major hurricane or anything with winds significantly over 100 miles per hour. Right now, the current expectation is max winds will be about 85 miles per hour at the time of landfall. But high wind, storm surge, and flash flooding and mudslides are going to be, of course, major concerns with any kind of storm moving into eastern Mexico, and hopefully everyone is prepared and ready for this as it comes in within about a day and a half. Switching back to the big view, we're going to talk about Henri now, continuing to move toward the west. It's been tracking to the south of Bermuda for the last few days, and it is going to take this track that we've been talking about for a few videos now toward the north and get uncomfortably close to New England during the next several days. This is the close invisible loop of Henri, showing that the storm is finally beginning to feel some impacts of the northerly shear that has increased in the last day or so compared to the values it was uh, yesterday and the day before. And so we're starting to see Henri's center showing signs of being located closer to the edge of the convective mass instead of centered underneath it. And we can confirm this by looking at an ace gap pass from a few hours ago, which showed the wind barbs here locating the center kind of under the northern edge of this mass of white, indicating the convective clump. And this also shows that the maximum winds have likely decreased some since last night. We haven't had a plane in there yet. There is a recon plane en route to the storm as I make this video, so we'll have some extra data later. But just based on ASCAT data and satellite appearance, Henri seems to be a little bit weaker compared to yesterday, likely due to this impact of the northerly shear. And this is not an unexpected result, as the shear was expected to be highest today. And so we do expect Henri to be struggling a little bit at this time. This is the big picture water vapor satellite loop showing Henri here. And again, it's really all about this ridge that's currently centered off of North Carolina, bringing northeasterly flow down in the mid to upper levels pushing on Henri from the north and northeast, and you can kind of see this cirrus, feathery cirrus getting fanned out to the west and then getting kind of flattened out here to the north. There's a very distinct edge to it as flow is pushing on it from that side. And in about a day's time, Henri is expected to move underneath the axis of this ridge as it shifts offshore, and shear will likely decrease tomorrow as Henri gets farther west. And we can see this happen on the H4 forecast, showing 200 millibar wind here. There's Henri currently right underneath this northeasterly flow where shear is currently maximized. And as we go out to Friday morning, we'll see that this ends up underneath the ridge axis and we have a healthier look aloft, more favorable environment for Henri. And we're likely to see some recovery here and re-strengthening beginning on Friday. We'll see this upper level trough also encroaching on the eastern seaboard, and this is going to become a major player as Henri will eventually make a turn toward the north following the southerly flow on the east side of this trough. 
Now here's the steering flow on the GFS, and I do want to stress that there's still some uncertainty in this forecast. So the, the model that I'm about to show you is just an example, so don't take it literally. It's just to illustrate the steering influences here. There's a variety of possible outcomes for Henri. And now right now, Henri is centered right here. Here's Bermuda. And again, it's all about this ridge currently off of the Carolinas. This is the ridge that's shearing the storm, but also forcing it to take this journey westward and even a little bit west-southwestward in the short term. And within about a day, we'll see this ridge disintegrate as this trough is moving into the Ohio Valley and kind of eroding the ridge off of the Carolinas. And so eventually this westerly steering flow just disappears. And this will cause Henri to make a turn toward the north. And this turn is well forecast. We're not going to see an unexpected motion into the Carolinas or anything like that. This trough is here. This turn will occur. And the timing of this turn will be very important because as well as this trough over West Virginia here by Friday evening, we also have a ridge to its north in the Great Lakes that is moving toward the east and will continue moving eastward as Henri is making this turn. And the timing of Henri merging in to this pattern of traffic from west to east to its north will determine everything about what happens up here because the storm will be getting uncomfortably close to New England, but exactly how close will, will depend on the details of the timing and how strong Henri is. Currently, as Henri continues to fight with shear, the stronger it is, the farther south and west it's going to dip before it turns, the weaker it is, the sooner it makes that turn. This ends up mattering a whole lot because as Henri comes northward, this trough here, or this upper low, is going to try to pivot Henri northwestward toward New England but it likely won't happen if this ridge doesn't happen to be here at just the right time to cause this southeasterly flow between the trough and the ridge to be strong enough to actually direct Henri slightly toward the west, that slight bend toward the left that causes a landfall to occur. If, for example, Henri arrives before this ridge has moved to the east, then this flow would likely allow Henri to simply move offshore toward the northeast and be less of a problem for New England. Likewise, if this ridge is allowed to go by before Henri arrives, then once again, the flow may be out of the southwest and allow Henri to simply curve northeastward offshore. So really, the worst case scenario for New England comes if the ridge happens to have just the right timing so that, or the wrong timing in this case, such that Henri it bends toward the left and gets toward the coastline prior to turning back toward the east. And this has been forecast in more model runs over the last couple of days, and we've seen a forecast shift in general toward a track that does get this very close to New England prior to turning back toward the east. And the consensus forecast now has this just off of Cape Cod somewhere, on Sunday or Sunday evening. Now there's a couple of factors to consider here. Some of them good, some of them not so good. One of these factors is the fact that since this upper low is just sitting here and the jet stream is way up above the Midwest and over the top of this ridge, there's really not a lot of fast steering flow here. And as the storm comes up, there's very weak steering currents in general. As this upper low weakens and as this ridge passes by, there's not a lot of fast flow to direct Henri in any particular direction. So as it gets up toward this turning point, it will slow down substantially. And it's possible that this slowdown occurs just to the south of New England. And if that's the case, if we look at the h wharf here, once again, the, the warm Gulf Stream is running along the coastline here. And there is a zone of quite cold water to the south of Massachusetts. And if the storm happens to be slowing down over that cold water, it will rapidly weaken on approach to New England. So in terms of wind and coastal flooding impacts from wind-driven storm surge, if it stalls here and weakens a lot, that would be good news. Because even if we get a landfall, the winds will fall off very quickly if this spends almost a full day north of the Gulf Stream before making it to shore. The bad news associated with this kind of track is that we could get a tremendous amount of rain on the north side of this and the west side of this as it moves into New England and we could get inland flooding being a bigger problem than anything else even if the storm is weaker by the time it gets up here. The theoretical worst case outcome here is that Henri gets strong as it comes over the Gulf Stream as it should be strengthening under a, a favorable environment up to this point and if it's far enough west that it just moves right into New England without slowing down a whole lot, if the timing works out that way, 
that would get you a legitimate hurricane hit or hurricane strike to Long Island and this region of New England. That's the theoretical worst case here. The storm would still be weakening, but you'd get all the wind and the flooding all together. At the moment, the consensus forecast seems to be that Henri will be slowing down somewhat, and there's a a wide range of where this could end up. I just want to show you the GFS Ensemble set of possible futures here just to give you a sense of the uncertainty. And right now, some of the members do have a track right up into Long Island or Connecticut or Massachusetts and showing you know, a hurricane that moves into the coastline and then rapidly weakens as it slows down and drops a lot of rain over the region. But there is a whole group of members that are still completely offshore here. And again, it's all about the timing. There are some details and the devil is in those details for this kind of a forecast. And we really can't guarantee whether or not Henri will actually make a landfall and a direct hit in the northeastern US. It's just not something we can guarantee either way right now. You can see there's a tremendous amount of spread even at a three day forecast. This is a lower than average confidence in what the forecast is going to do here. Right now, the National Hurricane Center has continued to shift the track toward the west and now shows this slowdown. These points are separated by 24 hours. This is very slow movement here between Sunday morning and Monday morning, showing that slowdown north of the Gulf Stream, moving toward Cape Cod, and then making that turn toward the east, being at hurricane intensity as it moves north of the Gulf Stream and then weakening to below hurricane strength by the time it arrives. This would still likely be a flooding event as well as an elevated wind and coastal surge event for this section of New England. So even a track offshore like NHC shows would be a problem. But fortunately, again, with the slowdown, not the worst that it possibly could be with a New England hurricane. Again, there's a lot of variability here. We're talking about four days for this to get to Cape Cod. We have a lot of experience with four day, five day hurricane forecasts. They do tend to move around. There do tend to be changes. So if you live up here, you should expect that. This particular exact forecast may not actually come to pass exactly this way. And I just showed you how we could get a range of possible outcomes here, some worse, some better. Some still avoid New England entirely, so we'll be hoping for that, but you have to be prepared for the possible worst case, which would be a hurricane coming in, and even though it would be weakening, it would still be a hurricane coming into New England and bringing all of those hazards with it. So have a plan of action, consult your National Weather Service office for information about the local forecast for your area, and listen to your local officials if they give instructions. Once we get closer in here within a couple of days, if a landfall is still expected, they will tell you uh, what to expect in your local area. So stay safe, everyone, and just have a plan just in case. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.